everybody, it's Alice K. Recklehouse from Threshold of Hineni, and I just wanted to work a little bit tonight at my table, so I thought we would do kind of a tutorial on that little wallet that I had made about a month ago, and then I included in a rack, kind of happy mail for a group that I'm in, um, and I had a lot of requests for how to make it. And so I'm pretty sure, I meant to look before I came to the table and I forgot, I'm pretty sure that it was Carol Tinson whose video I had watched and then done it. Um, and I've kind of forgotten for sure, but I'll link it down below in the description because I, I think that you'll probably want to see her video too. I am going to <laughs> try to make it without going back and watching her video. And I don't have the original one that I made because I sent it out with that Happy Mail. And um, I don't want to, I was just running across some pictures of it and I thought, I don't want to forget about that because you know, you do things and you think, oh, these are great, I need to make a bunch of these. Um, and it was really wonderful to have it for the Happy Mail. Um, but you know, then you forget about doing them and stuff. So I thought if I make a bunch of them, not a bench, but like three or four, then, you know, that'll help solidify it in my mind. And if I talk to you guys about how I'm making it, that will also help. So what I'm going to do is I have a few journals here, three journals that I'm going to make after the project that I'm working on right now. And so I have these scraps cut offs from them. And I thought that I would make basically kind of um, Franken paper, but the the um, pieces will be a lot bigger than what I usually do, so it'll be more like a patchwork kind of thing. And I'm gonna keep them square and not uh, distress them or anything. Uh, and make that into the sheet that I need for the little wallet thing. And then hopefully I can remember how to make the wallet. I'm pretty sure that I can. I kind of thought through it um, a little bit before coming to the table. I'm not doing this completely unplanned but um, I'll, I'll talk you through it as I'm doing it. So what we want to end up with, oh, I should have brought some paper with me. Ah! Um, what we want to end up with, wait a second, I think I have some paper here, is a piece that's going to be, oh dear, this has stuff on it that I don't wanna use. Um, what else do I have? Oh, I know, I've got this envelope. Okay, so we have, this is bigger than what I want, so I'm gonna cut it, and this will actually be just perfect. I'm just gonna use one piece of it, not, not the double. Um, and I think that what I want is to end up with something that is about, um, let's say, and looking at how I cut, I think I need to use my paper cutter. Um, I think I want it to be about six six or seven inches let's say six and a half inches wide and then I want the finished thing to be about four inches tall okay so it so it'll need to be because I'm gonna you know flap it over it's gonna have to be bigger than that so let me get my paper cutter and first of all let's trim that edge that I just cut because I did a really bad job of it and by the way, you may hear some, you may hear some banging outside. It is the 4th of July when I'm recording this. So, um, yeah, there, did you hear that? <laughs> we have, we'll, we'll be having fireworks. The city is doing fireworks later on tonight. So I think people are getting all their, um, you know, their home fireworks out of the way. In Tennessee, it's legal to buy fireworks. And so... Yeah, people do that here. Okay, so we want it to be, I said four inches, right? Let's do four inches. So we're gonna make this um, about 10 inches long. Okay, so 10 inches long. Turn it this way, actually. So we can use the measurements. All right, 10 inches long, like that. Save, I'll save this cool thing. I mean, because I can use that for something, I'm sure, something fun. 
Okay, and then I'm going to cut six inches wide. And this will actually give me the base for two of them. Um, so I can make another one after this. Because I, I want to make like three or four. I, do, I don't think that I'll do the video for three or four, but for one I think would be great so that you can see how it's done. <laughs> Assuming I do it right. But I think I know what I'm doing. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sort of some patchwork kind of stuff on this. And I'm just using this as my base. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and sew it onto the part that has this on it, um, even though we're gonna be covering both sides eventually anyway. Okay, so I think I'm gonna do maybe a whole strip of this. I wanna put it though so that this dotted line is on the inside so it will get covered. I don't want that to show. Okay, so what I do when I'm making Franken paper is I don't sew along the edges when I'm putting it on because um, I'm gonna go all the way around the edges at the end. So I don't really wanna make like multiple, I mean, it's not the end of the world if you have multiple zigzags on top of each other, but it's just not necessary. So I sew it down on a side. If I know that there's a side that I want to be covered, I'll sew it there because, you know, what I leave open can always have stuff, you know, that I slip under it as well as over. So that had a dotted line on it that I don't want to show because these are the, these papers are from the top of the page where it is attached to the pad. I'll save this because I'll probably use it a little bit later. How about something pink? Here we go. Some of this. I think that'll be nice. And so we're gonna turn it a different direction. I'm gonna sew it right here. Okay, so, and I've got my sewing machine on zigzag. You can use glue if you want. I just like to sew. And I do think that for this project, sewing looks better if you do have a sewing machine. Um, you know, it just looks more like patchwork. And then I'm gonna go ahead and sew this edge right here because that's already where I want it to end up and it's already on top of something else. Okay. And then I'm just gonna trim it off right here where it extends past the end of the paper. See how I'm using big pieces where usually with my Franken paper, I use little pieces that have been torn and distressed and everything. I'm, I want bigger pieces for this. Okay, so let's go with How about um, a little bit of this? That would be nice. And we're gonna go ahead and put the line on the inside so that we can cover it up. Okay, and I've got that pretty straight. Uh, the other thing is that when I do normal Franken paper, it's usually like this way and that. It's more like a crazy quilt, where with this, I'm not like following a quilt pattern or anything, but I am, you know, making them more straight and parallel to each other and everything. And that's just my own choice. You know, I could use one of my more crazy quilt type Franken papers for one of these wallets, and I probably will sometime. I just didn't want to take, you know, hours and hours to make this when I'm doing it on video, because I didn't think that you would really appreciate having to watch all that. Okay, and then let's do some really pink here. How about that? That's cute, isn't it? Okay, let's make this one go all the way across. Okay, so I'm gonna, I lined it up with the edge here, you know, and I'm not, you know, I'm not worried about being super perfect or anything, but I am kind of trying to get things square as much as possible. And then I wanna do something on the bottom before I fill in the rest here because I don't want it to all just be like layering this direction. Okay, and you'll notice I did not sew this side, even though it's up against, I mean, it's already on something that's already sewn. I have the dotted line still showing here, so I wanna be able to tuck something under there a little bit. So I'm gonna leave that open. 
Let's look for something to fit on the very bottom. Ooh, 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 yeah. Is that cute or what? I like that. Okay, I'm not gonna sew it on the whole thing here. I'm gonna do it like about to there so it creates a line right here that hasn't already been used. I don't know if that makes sense or not. It's just kind of how I am. <laughs> I don't really know how to explain it. It's just kind of a weird thing about me, and you don't need to do that. <laughs> kind of strange, right? Okay. I know that when you see this, it'll see that I didn't get that exactly right, but that's okay. I know that when you see this, it's going to be after the 4th, but I hope you all had a good 4th of July. How many of you worked on paper crafting? <laughs> Did anybody or is it just me? My husband is at work and so I'm by myself and feeling a little sad because I miss him. Okay, do I dare cut this by hand? Yes, I'm going to cut it by hand because it's got, see I'm just cutting from flower to flower so that I don't cut it all crooked to the center of those beige flowers. Okay, so I started out with my bigger pieces and now I'm gonna add some smaller ones. So this one is primarily to cover up this line right here. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and put it over this pink one and I'm not gonna have it go all the way to the end either. Okay, so but I think that's pretty much parallel to everything that it needs to be. Like I said, it doesn't really have to be perfect. There we go. Okay, so I'm just sewing down one side right now because I'm not really sure where I'm going to put other things. Let's see. We have a little bit of this paper, but not very much, just right there. So I could use this again. Um, yeah, I think, I think that would be nice. Okay, so let's cut this. See if I can get it reasonably square. And I'm going to cut it so I just have a piece like this. I'm going to tuck this under there. Okay, I'm going to actually make it flush with the edge there. Okay, so this is going to come under that pink. And then I think that we'll close the pink up by zigzagging over that. And we're just going to go right over that dark pink one so we can go all the way to the end. There we go. That's good. Okay, this is kind of plain because it's just that yellow. But I think it's okay. I think it's kind of pretty. Okay, and what else do we have? We have this, which we used here and here. So I think I want to have some of it over here because... Um, I just feel like it's a little unbalanced because I've got it twice over on one side. So let's go ahead and slip it under here. Okay, wow, something's really crooked. Okay, I'm not quite sure what, but something's crooked, but that's okay. Okay, so I'm always saying it's not the end of the world. Okay. If it was super important for it to be straight, then we would use rulers and everything else but I'm not really concerned about that now there's an awful big piece of this so I do want to cover some of that up let's trim this edge what's extending over here okay um, and this is kind of big too so we want to do something with both of those so let's see I think we'll use a little bit more of this right here um, Ooh, that's kind of cool. Let's do that right there. Okay, and I'm kind of to the place now where I'm going to have to cut this dotted line off because I don't really have places to tuck it under, and that's okay. I don't mind, you know, wasting a little bit. I don't really want to cover up pretty stuff with just that plain part there. So we're going to do it. Now see how I've got this lace going this way and this is kind of the same, so I'm gonna have it go a different way. Maybe even 
Yeah, maybe even like that. Ooh, and I've still got a dotted line here that needs to be covered up. Okay, so don't let me forget about that, you guys. Because you can help me remember, right? <laughs> um, let's see, let's not sew it up there so we can slip stuff under it to cover up the dotted line. Okay. And we'll go back and we'll make sure that everything's sewn down once we're done, but I want to kind of leave stuff open because like I want to have something there. So, um, not the same thing. Okay, so this, if I cut that, that's not even going to look like it's from the same piece of paper because it's completely different. So let's do that right there. Okay, so see then it's still going to show some of this but it's going to cover up that pink line. In fact, I'm going to move it up just a little bit more. There we go. So it's covering more of the pink, but not so much of this stuff here, because I really like that one. Get this even here. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and sew it down right there on that side. So what this is, in case you don't know what I'm referring to, is it's going to be kind of a paper wallet with pockets inside, and if I remember, a pocket on the back, um, to put little things in, you know, like ephemera and stuff. Um, and, you know, I might include it in a, um, I might include it in a junk journal, or I'm kind of thinking I really liked having it for... Um, happy mail. A group that I am in, and I'll, um, I'll include a link down below, it's a Facebook group, and it's led by Melody Huey of Melody Made, and um, it's called Newbie Junk Journal Makers, I think, and we have <clears throat> Random Acts of Kindness, uh, which is really, really fun because you just pick somebody from the group who has included their address because they're open to receiving random acts of kindness and you make something for them and you can just do it randomly random or you can um, do it when there's a challenge to include particular things and so um, I did it when there was a challenge okay I'm gonna cut just a little bit just to cover up that part that's Okay, so I'm going to go, I'm going to cut through the flowers so that I can cut straight, and I'm going to cut on my dotted line to get rid of that. There we go. And I'll use that dotted line part for Franken paper. Okay, and then I'm going to scooch this under like that. I still feel like there's a little bit too much of that pink showing. Um, so I'm going to do something about that. I'm not quite sure what yet. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is getting froggy. I teach, uh, for those of you who don't know, I teach English to Chinese kids online, and I teach 10 classes <clears throat> a day, six days a week, and then I also teach on Friday and Saturday evenings. And so um, sometimes my voice gets a little, <laughs> it takes a little bit of a toll on my voice, but it's fun, I love it, it's great money. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a wonderful job. I really, really enjoy it. And then I enjoy the other people who do it too. Um, you know, we all kind of help each other and there's a Christian group that, of teachers that I'm part of and it's just really, it's just really nice. It's fun to have that kind of fellowship and everything. Okay, so I'm going to make this go this way, like that. Does that look good? I feel like, though, yeah, I want to cover this a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to do this right here, I think. Of course, it didn't stay where I wanted it to. And I don't know why I'm in the habit of putting my presser foot down when I take my fabric out and then I have to lift it up when I've got my hands full. Okay, so that'll work right there. Okay, 
so I think that's pretty good and it's gonna be folded too so that's not all gonna show together you know what I think I will put one more piece right here let's get just a little bit more of this I know you guys are saying just be done with it already <laughs> I'm one of those people who has a hard time finishing things <laughs> Can you tell? Okay, so let's sew that on. So this part is really, really easy. And you know, if you're used to working with fabrics, then you'll have sort of an idea already of what you're doing. I don't know, does this piece still seem a little big? I think so. But, Okay, it's either gonna be in the front and covered like that. Oh, this one's considerably smaller than the other one I did. Or it's gonna be like this. It's kinda cute, actually. I think I'm gonna leave that. I think we're, we're ready. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to look for all the places where I need to sew it down, where it's not already sewn. Oh, by the way, um, if I go over half an hour, which I'm almost sure this is going to, my phone will cut it off a little bit at over half an hour and it'll start a new video. It won't warn me though, so I have no way of saying, okay, let's start a new video. And I forgot to look at the time when I started, so I don't know how long I've been going already. So when this cuts off, just look down in the description box because I will link the next part of this. Okay? And I'm sorry, that's kind of how my videos are these days. Until I get an actual real live camera, I'm using my phone, which is a Pixel, which is, I think it does pretty well. Um, it's just that it <laughs> does that, and I don't know why. And if anybody does know why and can help me with that, I would really appreciate it. And so would people who watch my videos, probably. Okay, so I'm just going along. I'm looking for any edges that haven't been sewn down and making sure that those all get sewn down nicely. Okay, so here's one right here. Let's take care of that. I may cut this into a couple videos anyway, just because I know it's going to be kind of long. So maybe we'll do this over the course of a couple days. I think actually what we'll do is we'll just make this Franken paper base and and um, then call it quits for today and make the rest of it tomorrow. Okay, and we might make some stuff to go inside too, I'm not sure. I may just, you know, wait and see what the next challenge is or something. Okay, I've got an open edge right here and I've got Okay, so I've got this one here and I've got this one here. So I'm going to sew down kind of the middle of it so that I will be able to catch both of them when I come to that. Rather than having to turn a corner or something or sew it twice. There we go. And it doesn't matter if you go beyond um, where the piece is either. It's actually kind of good because if you're not back stitching, then this will help keep it from unraveling. and here we go so since I'm just sewing right now and oh my bobbin threads running out great I'm just sewing right now you know what since the bobbin thread is rowing is running out and we were gonna quit once we were done with this let me just tell you what I'm gonna do for the rest of this and then we'll pick up from there in the next video so I'm gonna finish sewing around all these edges okay and then I will go all the way around the whole thing to get the outside of it okay and that will give us our Franken paper base now you don't have to do Franken paper you can just use a solid piece I think that's what Carol Tinson did in hers was I think she just used a solid piece I just really like using the Franken paper um, she decorated hers and this kind of makes it so I don't have to decorate it because <laughs> it's already done. So I'm gonna call it quits there, get some more thread on my bobbin, and um, I will post the next one tomorrow. Love y'all, bye bye.